Okay, uh, this says let's open the floor up to questions and answers. Uh, you mentioned about the collaboration with APM and the institutes like PMI, and uh, you as well mentioned about the standards that you want to set through Planet Planet. Uh, when you have institutes like PMI and APM are uh, uh, much more established and their standards being already uh, well established in various uh, uh, fields, uh, where do you think Planet Planet uh, comes into picture compared to these uh, institutes? Okay, um, this is this is not Planning Planet. This is the Guild. It's a separate entity. We're just using the Planning Planet community to get the message out to, to this independent organisation, which we're calling the Guild. Um, you're 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 100 right. We shouldn't, and we don't need to define different elements. We don't need to define what a work breakdown structure is because it's been defined by the CIOB and by the PMI. So what we're saying is, in, a, in to take it to a very simple level. We could just define a shopping list of a planner. Just take the planning stream. A planner should know A, B, C, D. And we can point them to, the, to, to what the PMI has done in terms of defining the knowledge of, that, of those elements. So it could just be at the very simple level, a reference book to say, to understand about codes and structures in a, in a schedule, the, the PMI have defined it like this, the A cost T have defined it like this, the AACEI have it like this. And so it could just be a, a simple pulling together of all of those things. Obviously, there's some, some words that the people that are involved are putting together. So we're not reinventing the wheel. We're not trying to compete with those things. We're saying if you have your PMI, and if the, the, the people in the earlier committees we talked about say that the PMI has, is very strong in here, here, and here, or the ACOST is very strong here, here, then that gets you 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 ticks in the box for that. So it's not a case of reinventing that or, or saying, you can't come because we're talking with major companies that have great alliances with certain professional bodies and they pay subscriptions and they do all that kind of stuff and we're saying to them are oh, we you know they come back and say oh i love the apm I'm, we're deeply involved in them and we're saying fantastic we're recognizing that and we're looking at what they do with their special interest groups so we just we just plug it into them so the company it's a win-win for the for this guild entity so we're not reinventing the wheel and, and competing we're just saying taking the best from the best if we can. Hi, you all right? Um, I was just wondering whether the, uh, the self-assessment is going to be used as a formal judge of, um, of whether you're going to be able to get a job using that criteria I, and, and how it's going to be used because I filled out the self-assessment but I didn't really find any criteria of, uh, of how to judge yourself or on the point system is one yeah. to five or whatever. And, um, and some people might judge themselves differently, but also whether there be um, like a knowledge and uh, an experience section of the same chart. So you can go in and do a course and get all the, the knowledge behind it, but you not, might not necessarily have the experience to back it up. And I suppose it's how you fill them gaps. Okay, the, the self-assessment is, is something that's created a, a, a huge level of interest. It's, it's not there to validate that you have any, any particular strengths or weaknesses. It's simply there as a, against a, a, an outline shopping list of, of, strength, of areas of competence. It's just to say, myself, I view myself as a 5 out of 5 here and a 2 out of 5 here. It's just a, a view, a personal view of of, of where you sit. Now the Guild can use that to, to identify you know, benchmarks across different industries. So we can filter the, the information for all of the people in Petrocare with 20 years or more and see where the average benchmark is. And we're rolling out a tool so that you can look at your, your own skill set. You could have said, like some people do, I'm five out of five in everything and I'm fantastic. So you, look, you see how you fit against the benchmark. It's, it's simply a tool to engage some people. And we've had a huge proportion of the, the membership jump into that and play around to see that. That's not part of, uh, of proving capability or competence. The, the, one of the groups that we talked about on the previous slide, which we'll put on the internet for people to read, is in the, the, the membership committee area, where they look at how these standards should be applied to the different types of memberships they've got within the Guild. And it's, that, it's simply a precursor to that within the membership process that we look at experience, we look at capability and we look at knowledge and, and those are defined in different ways. Some of it is done or can be done through interviews, some can be done with, with, with online assessment. We have systems in place now to make sure that it is you 
doing the self-assessment on there. It is not, it's not the same thing. Um, the, the companies we talked about that are supporting this now, they're opening up their conference rooms to say, well, you know, the chap from BP says, well, I've got 30 planners here in, uh, you know, in Hong Kong I want to put through this. So they're going to start on some of the testing, if you like. They're going to put their own guys through it. So, so they're opening up their office, if you like, to other people who perhaps are not, don't work for BP to go in and use the facilities. So the Guild gets some, some, some benefit from that. You know, I guess BP think, well, they'll get some good planners in the room as well at the same time and they can hunt for some CVs, but you know, that's, that's where it is. So it's a, it's a, there's, a, there's a specific route that these, these gentlemen and ladies are putting together to, to identify how you look at skills and knowledge and capability, which are different things. It's not a case of read a book and write a nice story and then, at worst case, have an interview. It's not about that. It's about proving what you, you know what you're doing. Not that you can write a good story. Um, how will the, uh, the the guild identify to me uh, in a managing planning role? Who who has got what um, qualification or what type of planner I'm getting? Will there will there be a different lettering or, or, or something that I can look for on a CV? To you know, we all know the debate debate of what's a planner, what's a programmer, uh, and all the rest of it. I, I, I'm looking for something that can easily identify what I'm getting and what I'm looking at in my CV rather than just, hello, I'm the planner sort of thing. Yeah, um, we're, we're looking at it in several ways. The, one of the exciting things that the, the membership element of, the, of those groups is looking at is, is how we have some acronyms and how, and how we fit to that. The, the, a big scheme of thought says that I, there's a there's a URL, a website inter in address that, that you can give to an employer or to your colleagues or publicise on LinkedIn or whatever that says these are my credentials which are controlled by the Guild. You can't just fit in everything and say this is me, I'm great. But you can look at that web address and it shows James Williams good at this, has no idea about this, has got this experience, this has been proven, this is, you know. And, and even we can put on there the self-assessment results to show how he views himself compared to what he's been proven. Um, but one of the things that hasn't been identified fully is, is, is acronyms, if you like. They're, they're way down on the list of, of what to do. But yeah, we're, we're looking at, I, as, a, as a planner myself, I'm looking at proving that I'm an intermediate senior level planning type. You know, chap here is going to prove that he's an intermediate senior level controls guy, which includes planning, which includes budget and value of risk and all that kind of stuff. So, it, it, you know, if you want to shape some of that, get involved. If you want to just use it later on, then just join. If you watch from the byline, you can. It's, it's, all, it's all up to us to do what we want.